be with you. And with your spirit. Well, what a lovely sight to see you all here to celebrate the feast of the Epiphany. Epiphany is a big word, and what it means is showing forth. So Jesus being shown to the whole world, represented by the three kings that have come a long, long way. Over the 12 days of Christmas, from Christmas to today, we've been seeing the kings come along ever so slowly because they were coming from the east, which is over there, and uh, it took a long, long time to get there. So they came bit by bit by bit, and there they are, they've arrived at the crib today on the Feast of the Epiphany. So that's what we're celebrating in our Mass today. So let's just have a little think for a moment about what we'd like to pray for and tell God we're sorry if there's anything that we feel, you know, that we haven't been as good as we could have been, and then we'll say our sorry prayer. <clears throat> you were sent to heal the sorrowful of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's praise God now with our Gloria, which you have on your song sheet. <laughs> Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's sit down now for our first scripture. Read 
reading from the prophet Isaiah. Jerusalem, stand up and shine. Your new day is dawning, and the glory of the Lord shines brightly on you. The earth and its peoples are covered with darkness, but the glory of the Lord is shining over you. Nations and kings will come to the light of your dawning day. Open your eyes and look around. Crowds are on their way. Your sons are coming from distant lands, and your daughters are being carried like young children. When you see this, your faces will glow, your hearts will beat fast and swell with pride. Treasures from over the sea and the wealth of nations will be brought to you. Your country will be covered with caravans of young camels from Midian and Ephah, and the people of Sheba will bring gold and spices in praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth, earth will adore you. Please help the king to be honest and fair, just like you are God. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore you. Let him be honest and fair with all your people, especially the poor. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Force the rulers of Tarshish and of the islands to pay taxes to him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Make the kings of Sheba and of Seba bring gifts. Make other rulers bow down and all nations serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to Jesus. Do what he tells you. Open your hearts We have seen his star in the east and have come to adore the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was the king. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? They told him he will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judea, you're very important among the towns of Judea, because from your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they'd first seen the star. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search very carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, let me know so that I can go and worship him too. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they'd seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And they were really thrilled and excited to see the star. When the men went into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, so they kneeled down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and gave them to him. But later on, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they went back home by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Let's sit down now for a moment and have a little think about this. So children, in the olden days, when your mums and daddies were really old, no, not really, a long, long time before then, there was no such thing as sat-nav, did you know that? The sat-nav where you find your way in the car and how you can find your way down different streets. And so when people went to sea in the olden days, it could be quite dangerous because some of them even thought that they might sail off the edge of the world and disappear forever into a big chasm or something like that. But what they uh, found out was that they could actually find their way by looking at the stars. Because they noticed that some stars never change their position, like the pole star. So you could always work out roughly where you were in the world. And when the wise men set off on their journey from the east, a long way away, as I was saying at the beginning of Mass, they didn't know what kind of lands they were going to go past. It could have been very dangerous, it could have been robbers, they'd be, you know, they didn't know the land, and they had no idea, of course, where they'd end up, because they didn't know where Jesus was. All they had to guide them was this star that God had sent them to lead them to, uh, as it turned out, to Bethlehem, and that's where they found Jesus. And they were so thrilled but that they, they trusted God uh, with all their hearts and set off on this journey. So, a star can be something very comforting. It can be a guide. It can also give you courage to set out on a journey. But sometimes we call people stars. If I said to you, um, you're a star, what, would it, what, what do you think I'd really mean? Yeah? You're a star at doing some work or something like that. You're absolutely right. Yeah? Any more? What else would you... Yeah? You'd be what? You're a superstar. Thank you very much. Oh, that's really nice. Yes. Okay. Pardon? You're responsible. Yeah. Okay. Any more? I think a star, we think a star is outstanding, it's somebody who is out of the ordinary, it's somebody who shines, you know, uh, like rather like Messi did in the World Cup, for example. He was a superstar, wasn't he? And everybody thought, isn't it wonderful to see him play because he's so good. Have any of you ever been star of the week? Hands up if you've been star of the week. <laughs> oh my goodness, we've got a school full of stars here. Okay, hands down, isn't that brilliant, the stars of the week. And if you are a star of the week, it means that everybody else wants to look up to you as a good example, okay? So we say, that's why we're here in church today, we say that Jesus is the greatest star that ever has been and that ever will be. And so he led by a good example and he wants us to be a similar star, to be a good example. So for example, sometimes people come to me, it's happened a lot over my life as a priest, and they say, Father, I've been, you know, reading, my children go to a lovely school, etc. And I think I'd like to become a Catholic. And so I say, well, why do you want to become a Catholic? And they said, because I've seen the wonderful example of somebody who's my friend. And uh, I want to have something that they've got. And so, you know, when you think about it, all of us who believe in Jesus and want to be his disciples, we only know that because somebody told us about Jesus. Somebody gave us an example. And so if we want to be real, proper followers of him, we too have to try and be an example to other people. We have to be a bit like a guiding star, because don't forget the star came to the uh, three wise men, but they didn't know where the journey was going to take them. It was just the beginning of the journey. So we have to be, if you like, a star to help people to find their road in life and their journey to heaven because we're all here to look after each other to help to guide to protect and get us all on the same journey home to our home in heaven so what i'd like to do now is just what we'll do is just for a moment we'll just kind of sit still and we'll close our eyes and be very silent and we'll just thank god for sending his son jesus to be our guiding star through this life, whatever the journey through life is going to be, whether it's rough or tough or anything like that, uh, on our journey home to our homeland in heaven. So let's thank, that's a little quiet time, and we'll thank God in our hearts for sending us his wonderful son, Jesus, who of course is the greatest gift 
that he gave us in this world. Okay, I hope you have a good little think and a good little thank you. So we're going to have some, no, we're going to profess our faith first of all. So let's stand. And those of you who've got the mass on a card, we're on page two, okay? It's a long prayer, which we say every Sunday to show that we believe in God. So let's say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for sending us your son Jesus, who was born on Christmas Day and who people came to see from the far east to worship him as our king. We thank you that he taught us so much about how to guide and protect people and look after them. And we now put before you our prayers. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Paul, all clergy, especially Father Alf. May they continue to lead us down our spiritual path. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all world leaders, that they may make wise decisions for the good of all the members of our global family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all children around the world, that they may have the chance to change their lives for the better and look to the future with hope and happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves, our communities, family and friends, that we may care for each other as Jesus taught us, and so change all our lives for the better. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that as a school and church family who are starting a new term together, we will all work hard to look after each other, particularly those who most need our care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask our Blessed Mother Mary to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. God of hope, we pray in a moment of silence for ourselves. Fill us with your peace and healing, 
restoring hope as you touch our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, Father, as always, we thank you for all the many blessings that we received over these last 12 months, and we ask you to bless us again as we start this new term. Thank you for listening to our prayers. We hope you will grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so we're going to sing our offertory hymn now, which is What the Child is. following in the books we're now on page three page three blessed are you lord god of all creation for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life blessed are you lord god of all creation for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your Church, 
in which we offer now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed and sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God our Father, you have brought us here together so that we can give you thanks and praise for all the wonderful things that you have done. We thank you for all that is beautiful in the world and for the happiness you have given us. We praise you for daylight and for your word which lights up our minds. We praise you for the earth and all the people who live on it and for our life which comes from you. you we know that you are good, you love us and do great things for us and so we all pray together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the Father, you are always thinking about your people. You never forget us. You sent us your son Jesus who gave his life for us and who came to save us. He cured sick people, he cared for those who were poor, and he wept with those who were sad. He forgave sinners and taught us to forgive each other. He loved everyone and showed us how to be kind. He took children in his arms and blessed them. God our Father, all over the world, your people praise you. So now we pray with the whole church, with Francis our Pope, Paul our Bishop, in heaven the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles and all the saints always sing your praise. So we join with them to adore you. God our Father, you are most holy and we want to show you that we are grateful we bring you bread and wine, and we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit to make these gifts the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. Then we can offer to you what you have given to us, that on the night before he died, when Jesus was having supper with his apostles, he took bread from the table, gave you thanks and praise, and then he broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup that was filled with wine, thanked you, and gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children. And so we ask you to take care of those we love, especially those we're praying for today. And we also pray for those who have died. Remember everyone who is suffering from any pain or sorrow. Remember Christians everywhere and all the other peoples of the world. 
We are filled with wonder and praise when we see what you do for us through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let's stand now and we'll say our Father. Our Father.
Let's pray. <clears throat> Go before us with heavenly light, Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate today. Through Christ, our Lord. So children, as always, thank you very much for taking part in a lovely Mass today. You sang your heads off. In fact, I looked at the roof at one thing. I thought it was moving at me because you were singing so well that all that praise was going up to God in heaven, who sent us Jesus' his Son. And uh, we finish our Christmas celebrations today, the 12th day of Christmas. And we go into what we call ordinary time, where we try to put into practice all the things that Jesus taught us. And really try to be a good example to other people, to be like a star that guides people to the love of Jesus who loved us so much that he gave his whole life to open the gates of heaven for us. So thank you all very much for being here today and for taking part so beautifully. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And let's sing our final hymn as well as we've sung all the others, which is the first Noel.